Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now a few years ago I used the Intel Core i5-8400 in my everyday PC. It was and still is one of my favourite CPUs and I eventually intended to upgrade to the 8700 which also had 6 cores but 12 threads. It was an update I couldn't justify at the time, not for the cost anyway. Today though, well I finally own one as part of a cheap eBay pre-built. In this box we hopefully have a great starting point to a budget gaming PC so I thought we'd open it up, take a detailed look at the full specs and see how the 6 core 12 thread i7-8700 holds up in 2023. This custom PC cost me £170 and with the cost of second hand i7-8700s coming in at half that on their own, I thought this was a pretty good deal. As always, the case is a little rough around the edges which I've come to expect from used machines. Aside from the ASUS DVD drive, the first thing I noticed was the FTS gaming sticker. I've not heard of this brand and I can't find much about them online, but leave a comment below if you have any information. Unfortunately, we don't have a GPU with this build and it looks like there's never been one in here as the PCIe slot covers are still in place at the back of the case for now. Let's look inside and see what we do have to work with though. As I mentioned at the start, I've not heard of the company who built this, but they certainly did a good job with this as everything is neat and tidy. This is also one of the cleanest PCs I've bought recently, with the thin layer of naturally accumulating dust being a welcome change to some of the absolute spider nests I've come across recently. The motherboard inside this thing is a Gigabyte Z370 HD3, which is, or was, a decent part back in 2017. Z370 boards were second only to Z390 boards, which had a few more features, a more notable one being the support for 9th generation chips out of the box. Because I want to stick an i9 CPU in here at some point, we may have to update the BIOS manually. It's important to remember that I do that before selling the 8700 actually. In pairing with our i7, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4. I knew this machine had 16 gigs, but I wasn't sure of the specs or the configuration. Nice to see we have dual channel memory in here too. Two eight gigabyte sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX clocked at 3000 megahertz to be precise. This is the stuff I usually use and can definitely recommend. Before tinkering around any further, let's see if it turns on. As I always say, test any secondhand PCs or components before cleaning them up to make sure they work because if they don't and you've already cleaned them, you don't know if it was you that broke something. This custom machine seems to fire up without issues and while it's booting, there's just time for a quick DVD drive check just to see if the previous owner has left anything behind. No luck this time. This thing booted really quickly, which leads me to believe that there is more than just the stated 500 gigabyte HDD in here, so we'll investigate further after a quick check of the specs. Everything seems to be in order here. I believe the i7-8700 has onboard UHD 630 graphics, which will be painfully useless for gaming, but for everyday use and some very light titles, they are fine. We also need to confirm the PSU brand before adding a graphics card, so let's do that now as well. I'm hoping that we have something half decent in here so that it can at least support a mid-range GPU without going up in flames. I noticed a couple of PCIe cables tucked away down the front earlier, but even some awful low-end units have multiple cables like this. It's just up to you whether or not you want to risk using them. Around the back of the machine, and again the cable management looks good, nice and neat. I won't completely remove the power supply from the case just yet, all I need is a glance at the brand and the label. After removing the screws and pulling the unit out a bit, I noticed that it was a 500 watt fractal essence. Now I've not seen many of these, if any, in systems that I've purchased before, but I do remember them being sold on a few sites here in the UK years ago. They were quite reasonable in price, but I have no idea about reliability or reputation for this one. Hmm. While fiddling around at the back of the case, I also discovered what was responsible for our fast boot times, a hidden 120 gig SSD. A few years ago, a small capacity SSD and a 500 gig or one terabyte HDD was the recommendation from a lot of PC builders here on YouTube. I always remember suggesting an SSD for the operating system and hard drive for storing games. These days, I'd just suggest buying the biggest capacity solid state drive you can afford to avoid any loading 
are streaming issues that some games have with HDDs. As I mentioned earlier, my plans for this system include an i9 upgrade as well as the addition of a GPU. That said, the i7-8700 itself is still very capable and I want to test its performance in a couple of scenarios today. First things first, I decided to add a graphics card that I was confident would work with the Fractal Essence PSU, my RTX 3050. While I really like the 3050, especially this small palette version, maybe consider an RX 6600 from AMD instead if you have a similar budget. That should also work just fine on a PSU like this, but it'll offer higher frame rates, especially in those more GPU intensive games. That said, if you're using any modern entry level card, then an i7-8700 non-K will still have no issues. As we jump into some gaming tests, I want to mention the stock cooler, which most of you have probably noticed. Is this satisfactory, I hear you ask? Well, I can't really hear you because the CPU is making such a racket. There were occasions when the CPU hit nearly 90 degrees and this made the fan quite loud. It wasn't unbearable but very annoying. Most of the time the really high temps were recorded only in CPU intensive tasks though, like when running Cinebench or at the start of a game that required the shaders to be built. Starfield comes to mind. Most of the time the i7 sat between 70 to 80 degrees and it was pegged at 4.3 gigahertz which is the all core turbo speed. In other words there was no thermal throttling. I imagine that in some really compact systems though it would get hotter and I'd still recommend even just a cheap aftermarket solution because I can guarantee it'll probably be better than this. So far though, and so good, as far as the i7-8700 and 3050 combo is concerned. If you want to put together a lower cost 1151 socket build with an i7 like this one and you have an entry level GPU in mind, the processor will still be absolutely fine. I think the 12 threads really do it justice in 2023. I can imagine the i5-8400 on the other hand, my old favourite, will fare a bit worse as it lacks hyper threading altogether. In fact, anyone with an i5-8400 who upgrades to an 8700 in 2023 will still likely see a nice difference when it comes to consistency and frame times. That's speculation on my part for now, but I'll be running some tests like that very soon. For now though, let's move on. Next up, I'll be adding my RTX 2080 Ti to the system, but not before using a different power supply. The Fractal Essence did fine with the 3050, but I don't want to risk it with a more powerful RTX card, not even for the sake of some explosive footage. I plan to do some more comparisons soon, but for this part of the video, I compared the old i7-8700 to my newer i5-12400F, a Socket 1700 6-core 12 thread chip, at 1080p. What I found was that in CPU heavy situations, games like Cyberpunk for example, the 12400F noticeably pulled away in terms of the average figure and the percentile lows. In other games though, ones that were more GPU intensive, the averages were closer. This is a very small sample of results of course and I'll have some more tests soon, but overall the i7-8700 still seems like a really solid choice for those with less to spend. I guess it's motherboard prices that will determine if an 8th gen build is a good deal where you live, as these can sometimes be really expensive. Here in the UK, in fact, it's often cheaper to just buy a pre-built like this than it is to build a Socket 1151 system from scratch. But there we go, the cheapest i7-8700 PC on eBay. I'll have some more comparisons soon, as well as an i9 upgrade video because I've wanted to build a 9th gen i9 PC for ages and while it probably isn't worth it in 2023, I think it'll still be fun. Nice to see that this pre-built gives us the perfect starting point to do that as well. That's all for this one then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.